What's going on YouTube? There are more compact crossovers in the US market than ever before, and it's easy to understand why this segment pushes huge volume. But that also means it's harder than ever for individual models to stand out, which is why options like this Mazda CX-50 are adding even more choices and hybridization this year to take on the almighty RAV4. Secretly, these two have a little more in common than you might think. So let's jump right in and see if this underdog Mazda has exceeded the best-selling Toyota. So before we get into what's similar and different between these two, as well as the exterior and interior comparison, let's first set things up with the pricing breakdown. Starting with the CX-50, we have the new hybrid model in the top trim known as Premium Plus. After destination, its total price is $42,065. Moving to the RAV4, the trim that aligns with the CX-50 on pricing is the XSE with all the extra goodies. This sporty yet high-end trim rings in at a total price of $42,720 after destination. By the way, if you want to get the best price from local dealerships and access to invoice pricing info for these two models or any vehicle, we have a tool on our website to do just that. It's great for shopping, so make sure to check the link in the description for more information. If you're new to our comparisons, we objectively conduct them. We have done our best to weigh the points awarded throughout in major and minor categories, and towards the end, we'll go over an important thing that we have added to our comparisons reliability, and resale value information. Let's go ahead and get started. Beginning with the exteriors, both models convey their brand's respective design philosophies. I'm sure you've seen a RAV4 or two out there on the road, so you know that it has a boxy look inspired by the 4Runner. Mazdas, on the other hand, always go for sleeker designs, although the CX-50 is the most rugged looking model in their lineup. Both vehicles feature darkened grills and full LED lighting up front, and neither have fog lights. Continuing to the sides, the CX-50 actually has about a 5 inch advantage on the RAV4, but we will see later on if that translates to more usable space on the inside. In the meantime, we will award a score to the Toyota for making the option of a two-tone roof available for those who want it. I also want to mention the wheels, which are larger contrast 19 inch alloys on the CX-50 while the RAV4 maxes out at 18 inches on the hybrid variants. As a reminder, while we move around back, we don't score personal design preferences. However, it is worth mentioning that the CX-50 has beefy matte black cladding, and this RAV4 has more modest gloss black surrounds. Features wise, both have exposed wipers, spoilers, and dual exhaust tips, while the Mazda has the advantage for rear lighting and all the elements of the taillight cluster are LED. Toyota fights back with extra towing capacity, however. As far as the mirrors are concerned, they both have BSM, heating, and LED turn signals, and the Mazda also adds in power folding. And speaking of blind spot monitoring, family SUVs need to be safe, and one of the really nice things about these two is that all four of your major active safety features are included as standard equipment on all trims. The warranties are the same on both outside the fact that Toyota has complimentary maintenance for two years. Well, this is shaping up to be a tight race, so let's get to the interiors. But first... If you're new here, we're brothers, and we've been reviewing cars since we were 12 and 16. We may be young, but we love cars. <laughs> and we'd love for you to subscribe to be a part of our Car Confections family. Let's learn a lot, have some fun with all the latest cars. Approaching both SUVs, they have smart entry systems and their brand's respective key fobs. Both models have remote start options, although subscriptions are required after the trial periods expire. But after opening up the doors, you'll see these two have stark differences in many areas. Before we dig into those differences, let's start with the seats. While they are both 8-way power adjusting with lumbar support, the RAV4 is finished in faux leather, compared to real leather in the CX-50. They also are both heated, but only the Mazda has seat ventilation, since that's not offered on this trim of the RAV4. 
Now once inside the cabins, let's check out the major point category of material quality. Like many Mazdas, they have put a lot of focus into delivering a luxurious experience with higher end materials, padded areas, and stitched leatherette throughout. The RAV4 also has plenty of soft materials around the cabin, but it doesn't feel as plush as the Mazda. After startup, you'll see a partially digital gauge cluster on the Mazda, and a fully digital cluster on the RAV4, which gives you more customizability. CX-50 fights back with a premium head-up display in the windshield, which is not available on any version of the RAV4. Moving back, they have leather-wrapped steering wheels with manual adjustment and even rain-sensing wipers, although the Mazda does not have steering wheel heating. Now it's time to evaluate another major interior section, storage. This is where we see that the opposite philosophy comes into play again, since RAV4 emphasizes maximum utility here instead of luxury. Its center console is larger, front storage cubby more versatile, and it has a special storage shelf in front of the passenger. In a sign of what's to come when we talk about the powertrains, they actually share the same exact shifter. But when in reverse, what comes up is different, since the RAV4 gives you a 360 degree camera system, and the Mazda still only gives you a basic camera with fixed lines. They don't include a 360 camera unless you buy the even more expensive turbocharged model. Climate controls are simple to use with two zones of adjustment, and both have physical volume knobs. The Mazda has a Bose system and the Toyota a JBL, so let's go ahead and sample them. Overall, the Bose system is a bit more powerful sounding and has an extra speaker. People want a high level of technology in cars nowadays, so let's move to the key element of displays. As far as sizing, CX-50 has a 10 and a quarter inch setup versus a 10 and a half inch one in the Toyota. More important than that tiny size difference is that the Mazda screen is mounted far away from the driver, since it's intended to be navigated by the control knob on the dash. When using Mazda's interface, you cannot touch the screen, although you can strain to touch it when using wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. The RAV4 also has wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, and it's easier to use in the day-to-day. -day. As we wrap up the front of the cabins, both have auto-dimming mirrors with Homelink remotes, and the Toyota has rear camera functionality if you flip the switch. Up top, they have large panoramic moonroofs that open and have sunshades. People of all walks of life buy compact crossovers, but they are very commonly used by families with kids, so let's dive into the importance of the back seats. Starting with space, the CX-50 wins based on the manufacturer provided specs. However, we measured knee space behind my 5.8 driving position in both models, and found that it's the RAV4 that's actually more spacious. You can see that visually as well when Mason is setting in the back seats. Headroom is also in favor of the RAV4, so it takes the space point. Now that that's out of the way, they also have quite a few features. Both give you USB ports and rear vents, and neither have heated back seats as equipped. That is available on both models, but you'll need to spend about $44,000 with the RAV4 limited trim or buy a turbo engine CX-50. Now let's see how much stuff you can bring along with you for the journey. Both have power tailgates, although only the RAV4 has a hands-free kick to open. Once they open up, you will surprisingly see that the shorter RAV4 actually has a space advantage. For some reason, the packaging allows Toyota to give you 21% more maximal space with the back seats folded down. And that's despite the fact that both of them have spare tires. Mazda fights back though by having handles that easily fold the seats down without having to walk around to the second row. And speaking of hybrid, 
let's take these two family options out on the road and see who does it best. Now it's time to address the elephant in the room and one of the most interesting parts of this comparison. They have the same powertrain. Mazda added a new hybrid for 2025 and it is sourced from Toyota. Meaning both the Mazda and Toyota have 219 horsepower from a 2.5 liter 4 cylinder engine and 3 electric motors. As expected, acceleration is basically identical between the two of them. Alright, so there we go. Off to the races with the RAV4 Hybrid. Now like we mentioned at the spec dump, actually the RAV4 Hybrid is more powerful than the traditional gas yep. powertrain option. And in addition to just being more powerful, which this has 219 horsepower to remind you, it does also have that low end electric torque. So yeah. when you get off the line, it has that nice sensation of acceleration. All right, that was 60 miles an hour. So like we were talking about at the spec dump, this new hybrid model really fits nicely in between the existing options. So this has 219 horsepower again from a 2.5 liter four cylinder engine and three electric motors. Now we've been talking a lot about, you know, the relationship here with Toyota. And I do want to point out that like the engine itself is sourced from Toyota. It's not like a sky active four cylinder engine. So it is Toyota's own four cylinder engine and this all just you know works together really very similarly of course to the Toyota Hybrid system that we're used to driving in products such as the RAV4. When it comes to transmissions this hybrid system is paired to an eCVT or electronic continuously variable transmission. This is a very responsive setup and all-wheel drive is also standard on both of them. Yeah, it certainly feels like plenty of power. And of course, the other element of the powertrain is the transmission. We might as well go on and get into that. This comes with an eCVT as opposed to the six-speed automatic you get with the other two engine choices. You know, this is a nice and responsive transmission. Again, it's typical of Toyota. It really all just works together super nicely. Besides transmissions, you're probably wondering how quiet the cabins are when cruising. Well, that's why here at Car Confections, we take a sound level reading of every vehicle we test on our channel. On the same stretch of road in Kentucky, we achieve pretty good ratings in both, but neither are the class leaders in this regard. The average human ear can discern one decibel of difference in sound, and these two are within one decibel of each other, so we won't award any points. We have settled in at 56.7 decibels. 57 and a half is what we uh, have settled in at. Now let's talk about an important part for any family SUV, the ride quality. This is where you see distinctly different priorities. RAV4 is very comfort focused, so its ride quality is pretty soft. But the CX-50 has a much tighter suspension tune to help with driving dynamics. Because of that, you feel road imperfections and bumps more prominently in the CX-50. On the flip side, however, the CX-50 exhibits incredible handling. It has very little body roll for an SUV in this segment, as well as some of the best steering of any crossover on the market. So, if you care about driving athleticism, the Mazda is definitely the way to go. Alrighty, and now we've finally turned on our designated highway stretch. And this is where I really want to spend a little bit of time talking about how good this RAV4 rides. Now, over the last seven days, um, we have driven this vehicle quite a lot. You know, I had a wedding to go to, so I drove it about two hours away and then road tripped back. So we've been in this vehicle for many many hours at this point this week and i have to say i'm very very impressed with the ride quality 
All right, but now we are on the highway section, and I want to just go ahead and quickly discuss overall ride quality. Now, one of the things about the CX-50 is that it is a Mazda. So uh, we were very curious as to if this hybrid version is going to change the overall feel. Does it still drive like a Mazda, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm happy to tell you that it still does have that same Mazda characteristic. That does mean, however, when it comes to your ride quality, it's going to be definitely on the firmer side for this segment of vehicle. Um, you're definitely going to feel a little bit more intrusion than you would in a RAV4 or other options such as the Honda CRV. As we go over a bump, You'll definitely, you know, feel a little bit of that inside of the cabin, which is not necessarily a bad thing for those of you looking for, you know, a Mazda, of course. Lastly, you might be surprised to learn that these two models are rated differently when it comes to fuel economy. To preface, these are two of the very best options in the class for MPGs, but the Mazda does trail the RAV4 by two MPG combined. In our reviews and comparisons, we are also adding in reliability and resale information to give you a better picture of the overall value beyond just the original MSRP. Beginning with reliability, we developed the Combined Reliability Index, which takes into account several studies from trustworthy sources and combines them in a way that gives you a more realistic picture. Here the advantages continue for Toyota. Toyota ranks as the number one brand for reliability, 16 slots above the industry average, awarding it 1.6 points. Meanwhile, Mazda is slightly below average for reliability, by just one slot to be exact. That takes away 0.1 points. We also put Mason's economics degree to work to develop a detailed predicted resale value tool. After five years and 60,000 miles, Toyota has the second highest predicted resale value in the industry at 64.5%, and Mazda closely trails it at 59.4%. This gives the Toyota 0.5 points according to our scale. I want to emphasize that if money, reliability, or resale value matter less to you personally, feel free to disregard these points. And if you'd like to check out all our data about reliability and resale values, as well as learn about our methodology, make sure to head over to carconfections.com slash resale and slash reliability. Buying a car is a big decision, and this is a great place to compare all the vehicle makes that you might be cross shopping. So there you have it. Another hot compact crossover comparison is in the books. But let's go ahead and recap a little bit here and see who should be your personal winner. Well, the CX-50 Hybrid should be your personal winner if, above other things, you value those driving dynamics as well as that performance edge. Mazda really nails that and stands far above the competition in that regard. So if you like to have fun behind the wheel, that's going to be the obvious choice. Also, if you want the premium interior experience, it has one of the very best interiors in the entire segment in terms of luxury. Yeah, and Mazda as a brand just feels so solid when you drive it. Uh, that's definitely something uh, that's different from the RAV4. Now, the RAV4 should be your choice on the other hand if you want a better fuel economy because it does get better MPGs despite having the exact same engine under the hood. It's also going to have a more comfortable uh, ride to it overall. The CX-50 is definitely going to be on the firmer end and have firmer seats. Additionally, it has touchscreen technology. Yes, the Mazda can let you touch it occasionally, but it's so far away, uh, it is really kind of inconvenient to touch. So the RAV4 will be kind of the easier to use technology interface to say the least. Now we want to know your thoughts. Which one are you taking? Are you taking the CX-50 Hybrid or are you taking the tried and true RAV4? Let us know your thoughts. If you're looking to buy either one, we would encourage you to go to carconfections.com slash new car quotes. Now, the reason you do that is because we have a tool on our website that will connect you with local car dealers in your area to get you the best price. It's also going to give you access to invoice pricing information, which is a great tool for dealership negotiation. If you'd like to take advantage of that, a link is provided in our video description, and we also have a pinned comment at the top of this video. And guys, that's going to be where we leave off on this comparison video. Hopefully you found it uh, helpful in picking between the CX-50 Hybrid or RAV4 Hybrid. If you did, we'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button down below. You will become a part of our Car Confections family. We have a lot of fun on this channel, and we do a lot of cool car reviews. I promise that you won't want to miss. If you're already a part of our family, thank you so much for your continued support. And we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.